Oh man, another busy one today. Hi, I'm Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. Larry the Cable Guy tweets, with all the bad news everywhere, I decided to watch some light TV. So I put on the Brady Bunch, just my luck. It was the episode where Bobby and Cindy went to Russia and were arrested for spying. Mark Norman, no wonder Batman is so depressed. Can you imagine how much it costs to fill up the Batmobile? Kostaki Economopolis was going to start a boycott of Yakov Smirnoff. Then I realized everybody not currently in Branson is already doing it. Pete Davidson is going to space. What do you think, half-assed Jeff Foxworthy impression? If you think Pete Davidson going to space is good for your podcast, you are correct. Oh, man, this is awesome. Thank you, Pete Davidson. This is going to be today's March 15th, and he's going on the 23rd. This is like eight, nine, ten days of content. Thank you, Pete Davidson. That's right. Pete Davidson will be the latest celebrity to fly to space with Jeff Bezos' company, Blue Origin. The launch, March 23rd, 8.30 a.m. Central Time. Sounds like we're going to have a bonus episode mid-morning that day. Pete Davidson will be joined on his flight by five paying customers. Who are these people, you're wondering? I will tell you. Marty Allen, an investor and the former CEO of Party Supply Store. Jim Kitchen, an entrepreneur and business professor. George Neald, a former associate administrator for the Federal Aviation Administration Office of Commercial Space Transportation. Interesting. Mark Hagel is an Orlando real estate developer, and his wife is going. Sharon Hagel, who founded a space-focused nonprofit. Sounds like the Hagels made a killing in the Orlando real estate market. The crew will spend a few days training, just a few. I mean, today's the 15th. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's nothing to do. You just sit there. I would be so terrified. I'm not doing this. They'll spend a few days training at Blue Origins facilities in West Texas. CNN says after liftoff, the rocket will tear past the speed of sound and near the top of its flight path will detach from the capsule as the rocket booster heads back toward Earth for an upright landing. The crude capsule will continue soaring higher into the atmosphere to more than 60 miles above the surface where the blackness of space is visible and the capsule's windows will offer sweeping views of the Earth. There's a war in Ukraine, climate change, and we're sending Pete Davidson to space. As the flight reaches its apex, Pete Davidson will experience a few minutes of weightlessness. As gravity begins to pull the capsule back towards the ground, Pete Davidson will again experience intense G-forces before sets of parachutes are deployed to slow the vehicle down. Blue Origin does have plans to build a rocket power enough to reach actual orbit. However, Russia can't sell rocket engines to the U.S. anymore, so who knows what Blue Origin is going to do. Some people have real problems. Now, when I woke up on Monday morning, that was not the lead Pete Davidson news. This was, from page six, Pete Davidson wants Kanye West to grow the F up. Let me get right to it. Pete sent Kanye a picture of Pete in Kim Kardashian's bed. That's throwing it down, man. Page six has the recap. They have confirmed these are real. Pete Davidson apparently tweeted, Yo, it's Skeet. Can you please take a second and calm down? It's 8 a.m. and it don't gotta be like this. Kim is literally the best mother I've ever met. What she does for those kids is amazing, and you were so effing lucky that she's your kid's mom. I've decided I'm not gonna let you treat us this way anymore, and I'm done being quiet. Grow the F up. Mr. West then asked, Oh, you using profanity now? Where are you right now? Pete Davidson sent back a selfie of himself shirtless under the covers with the caption, in bed with your wife. Wow. <laughs> Kanye, happy to see you're out of the hospital and rehab. Pete, same here. It's wonders what those places do when you go get help. You should try it. I'm in L.A. for the day. If you want to stop being a little internet bitch boy and talk, you don't scare me, bro. Your actions are so P-word and embarrassing so sad to watch you ruin your legacy on the daily. This isn't public, dude. I'm not here for pictures and press, which is obviously all you care about. My offer stands. I wish you'd man up for once in your life. Let me help you, man. I struggle with mental stuff, too. It's not an easy journey. You don't have to feel this way anymore. There's no shame in having a little help. You'll be so happy and at peace. You have no idea how nice I've been to you despite your actions towards me. I've stopped SNL from talking about or making fun of you, which they've wanted to do for months. Then there's a caption that says, I've stopped stand-up comedians. And the screen grab is cut off. The article from page six has one more line from Pete Davidson. I have your back, even though you treat me like crap, because I want everything to be smooth. But if you continue to press me like you have for the past six months, I'm going to stop being so nice. Yikes! 
I have a feeling we'll be talking about Pete Davidson again tomorrow. As part of all this, from People Magazine, fans have been paying a lot of attention to the selfie, and they think maybe, perhaps, Pete now has a tattoo on Pete's right shoulder above a skull tattoo. Funds are wondering whether it simply says Kim or if there's even a heart around her name. On Friday, Kim went Instagram official with Pete Davidson, but fans couldn't help noticing an odd discrepancy between the photo she shared to Twitter versus Instagram. Page 6 says social media users pointed out the carpet in the pics was clearly photoshopped. The one on Twitter featured a geometric design, while the floor covering in the Insta post appeared to be solid gray. That's weird. The pics posted to Twitter have since been deleted. One puzzled fan wrote on Instagram, I genuinely don't know why Kim edited the carpet. Does anyone know or care to take a guess? One person suggested so someone couldn't guess what hotel she's in. Hmm, interesting. Another was impressed by the detail, saying they even got the reflection on the fire extinguisher glass front to match, and shadows are perfect. This is masterful. And if you're like, Johnny Mac, enough with this. Sorry, there's more. Kanye is coming for D.L. Hughley now. After D.L. Hughley shared some thoughts on Kanye and Kim's divorce, Radar had reported about D.L. Hughley's sit-down interview with Vlad TV, where Hughley accused West of stalking Kim. Hughley said, he's stalking her. You can think it's cute. If it was my daughter, I'd do something about it. I don't think it's Kanye said, I'm a real person who wants the best for my children, and D.L. Hughley is a pawn. Yeah, I know a king is not supposed to dress a pawn, but I dress everything, and fine address is D.L., so don't speak on me or my children. I can afford to hurt you. Kanye followed that up with a screenshot of him Googling where D.L. Hughley lives with the ominous message, D.L. lives in, location, I'm not here to spread that. Yo, God is good, smiley face. Hughley responded, Ain't it weird that Kanye supposedly has all these goons who will kill for him, but not one of them will get his prescription filled. That's a funny slam. Here's a thought while you're on your way to location. How about somebody drop by CVS and pick up his Xanax? That's a lot of Pete Davidson for this morning. Oh, oh, wait, just as I'm recording from people. Let's see. This has just hit my inbox. Pete Davidson said he is done being quiet and alleged text exchange with Kanye West. The alleged text exchange between Davidson and West believes to have been in response to some of the 12 now-deleted posts shared on the rapper's Insta page Sunday morning in the first post of the day. West reposted a now-deleted TikTok video featuring his daughter and a strange wife in black clothing and makeup. In the caption, West took issue with the message he believed was being sent by both the song and his daughter's video. About an hour later, West shared a video of himself in which he claimed he told Kardashian to stop antagonizing me with the TikTok I said, I'm not allowing my daughter to be used by TikTok, to be used by Disney. I have a say. There's no such thing as 50-50 custody in society today. It always leans towards the mom. Davidson then sent the Insta with Pete flashing. During the apparent text exchange between Pete Davidson and West, Davidson revealed he was in L.A. for the day, offered to meet up with West. The rapper asked him to disclose his location. Davidson sent a photo of himself flashing a peace sign with his fingers and sticking his tongue out along with the phrase, In bed with your wife. At one point, Pete invited the musician to his hotel room after a Sunday service and Kanye West's son's Saints game to talk things out privately one-on-one. Kanye continued to urge the SNL star to meet him at his Sunday service, but Pete refused. This isn't public, dude. I'm not here for the pictures. Covered that already. Whew, that's a lot of Pete Davidson. Some other stuff. Amy Schumer, she's hosting the Oscars for some reason. Judd Apatow thinks she's going to be wonderful. I got to check and see whose agent is what. There's some Hollywood agent stuff going on with this Amy Schumer hosting the Oscars thing for sure. It is full court press out there. Judd said, I saw Amy working on the set last night and it's amazing. She's the greatest. She's a legend. They picked the right person to be part of that trio. Meanwhile, per the Daily Mail, Amy Schumer admitted she was leaning on the kind of shocking adult humor that she launched her career with. Though her lawyer asked her to tone down some of the jokes for the Oscars, she said, I emailed my lawyer about two jokes the other day, and he was like, no. Amy thought her material was up to snuff, but it initially didn't go off well when she tried out some ideas with Oscar producers via Zoom about a month ago, and they responded with silence. (laughs) Amy said, I was like, can you guys hear me? She recounted the start of one graphic nominee-themed joke that might have launched her introductory set, Get Rid of the Kids, Skip 30 Seconds if There's a Kid With You. That joke, My Husband Is Going Down On Me, or as he calls it, Squid Game, so he's in my nightmare alley. I didn't tell that well, but that's a funny joke if told properly. 
However, you're not doing that on the Oscars. My mom is going to watch the Oscars. She would lose her mind at that joke. Amy said she still planned to take a couple risks, but warnings from her legal team kept her away from the kind of joke she would normally tell on stage. And from WKRN, a bomb threat in Nashville resulted in a quick evacuation of Cat Williams' show Saturday night. Cat was about 10 minutes from the end of his set. The auditorium said Cat decided not to inform the crowd of the bomb scare and to avoid panic, possible injuries. A local security consultant told News 2 that he thought Cat Williams made the right call. He said high-stress evacuations can lead to crowding and fans trampling over one another. National police cleared the building successfully without incident. No suspects are in comedy at this time. If you like what I do here, you can support the show by going to buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news. I, I made the run to the donuts chain this morning and I came back and I got my mom something. I brought it down to my mom and she was telling me all about the Critics' Choice Awards. Whew, she couldn't get enough of this thing. All right, mom, what do you got? Well, apparently best comedy feature went to Licorice Pizza, best talk show last week tonight with John Oliver. Hmm, I guess. I don't know what I'd pick there. Sure. Best comedy special, Bo Burnham's Inside. Hmm. Bad choice. Best comedy series, Ted Lasso. Good choice. Best actor in a comedy series, Jason Sudeikis, Ted Lasso. Best supporting actress, Hannah Waddingham, Ted Lasso. Best supporting actor, Brett Goldstein. He's crushing it. Ted Lasso. Good night for Ted Lasso, huh? I thought Saturday Night Live was pretty good. Zoe Kravitz was very good as the host. I really enjoyed the opening sketch, which was Joe Biden meeting with TikTokers. I like anything that shows how stupid TikTok is. The monologue was pretty good. Kate McKinnon came out in a Catwoman suit. She described as, I'm Catwoman from the 90s, the one with the whip, you know, like cats have, which was a good joke. Then Ego Nuotum came out as Eartha Kitt's 60s Catwoman. A.D. Bryant as an actual cat lady. And then Chris Red broke out a Cat Williams impression. Thought that was good. The Maid of Honor speech was okay. I thought the pre-recorded Amazon Go store sketch was very funny. Please Don't Destroy got on before midnight again. And did you catch the crowd reaction? They got a big ovation when they threw it to them. Glad to see Lorne is finally giving them some daylight. I also really like the sketch with Bo and Yang and Don't Stop Believing marching band version. Bo and Yang is criminally underused. That guy is hilarious in everything and should be in a lot more sketches. I also really enjoyed the word crunch sketch with Momhole being the punchline for most of that sketch. A pretty solid episode of Saturday Night Live. Will Forte has signed on a star opposite Wiley Coyote in Coyote vs. Acme. Thank you, Hollywood Reporter, for this news. The story, Wiley Coyote sues the Acme Corporation for the not-quite-in-working-order devices he's received from them over the years in his quest to best his potential meal, The Roadrunner. The movie tells the story of a down-on-his-luck human attorney who takes on Wile E. as his client in a suit, only to discover that his boss at his former law firm is representing Acme. Will Forte will play the legal eagle. John Cena plays the formidable part employer. That sounds like a good time. John Cena, who we now know can actually do stuff thanks to Peacemaker. John Cena, not good in Fast and Furious 9. Very good in Peacemaker. Bob Odenkirk has a new comedy podcast, Summer in Argyle. This one is called an offbeat scripted comedy. It's on Audible. It's all I know about it. Bill Maher also getting a podcast. Club Random, a series that will see him host hour-long one-on-one interviews with. And here's a description. I've been doing this a long time. When this is your description, you have no focus. Pay attention. With a range of eclectic guests where they talk about anything and everything except politics. Any show that tells you talks about anything and everything or, you know, the news of the day or whatever you guys want to talk about. Those are unfocused shows and they don't work. Bill Maher's Club at Random, out March 21st, episodes every Monday. He's recording the show at his home in his bar which is known as Club Random. Not sure what that means, Deadline. Is there a bar in his house? I guess. Guests will include William Shatner, Quentin Tarantino, all right, rap artist Freddie Gibbs, YouTuber Hannah Stocking, Bella Thorne, Adam Carolla, Killer Mike, and Judd Apatow, who can tell us how awesome Amy Schumer is. Amy Schumer is hosting the Oscars for some reason. Is winning time a comedy? I guess. I laugh at it. I'm entertained. This is the Lakers thing on HBO, and you know who's in it. Mac Packer Michael Chiklis. That's right. Hey, Mac Packer Michael Chiklis, how did you prepare to play Celtics legend Red Auerbach? 
Mac Packer Michael Chiklis said, I read a couple of his books and Bill Russell's book, which was particularly insightful because it's great to learn someone else's perspective on someone as iconic as Red. It strikes me how universally loved Red was by those who played for him, the front office and the fans, and that because he wasn't dictatorial. He worked with the guys and made them feel like they had agency over their lives and that they had a partner. Conversely, those against Red effing hated him. And why not? He was a fierce competitor. He wanted to beat you and made for some great basketball. Let's see who's at South by tonight. Five o'clock Central Time, Creek in the Cave, Joe DeRosa's Sandwich Summit, Breaking Bread Over Culinary's Greatest Creation. What is this? Joe DeRosa, comedian and owner of New York sandwich shop Joey Roses, who knew, is joined by local chefs. They'll share their thoughts and unique spins on sandwiches. Blair Sochi and Eddie Pepitone are on the bill. Five o'clock? Something to do. Hopefully there's food there. All right, what else are we doing at five? We can go. Six o'clock at Esther's Follies, the wide world of Doug's comedy podcast. Your hosts, Doug Benson and Doug Millard. They're your guests, Dolce Sloan and Dave Foley. I think I'll stick with the sandwiches over that. At the Creek in the Cave at seven o'clock, the wonderfully titled Five Comedians Doing Comedy. Love it. Here's the description of Five Comedians Doing Comedy. Five comedians standing on a stage telling jokes. Comedy jokes. Love it. I just want to go to this show just because of the description. Vanessa Gonzalez, Andy Haynes, Mike Lawrence, Sean Patton, Scott Thompson from Kids in the Hall. Really good lineup there. Love the premise. You know, comedians telling jokes at a comedy festival. So, But that's at the Creek of the Cave after the sandwich thing. So, you know, we could just stay there. They probably make you clear out. You go outside, talk to somebody, go right back in. Eight o'clock, Esther's Follies has the Byron Bowers experience. Byron Bowers has built a reputation as an esteemed comedian, established writer, recognized actor, and passionate fashionista named by LA Weekly as a comedy act to watch. Sounds like his publicist sent this in to South By. They hit control paste and published whatever the hell Byron Bowers' publicist wanted. Your lineup, Byron, Logan Gunseman, Punky Johnson, Kiri Shabazz. Back to the Creek at 9, Comedy Send-Off. The end of the 2022 South by Southwest Comedy Festival is near, and we're sending it off with stand-up sets by new and old friends of the festival. Oh, no. Eddie Pepitone, Dulce Sloan, Blair Sochi, Shane Torres, Rich Voss. That's a solid show. 10 o'clock, last show of the night, Gotham Comedy Club stand-up showcase at Esther's Follies. Matthew Broussard, John Daly, Joe DeRosa, Mike Yard. That's a good show. I'd pick that one over the 9 o'clock show, I think. Oh, I had one more story that I wanted to tell you, but I just checked the clock. We're getting long here. We have to go. I have a good story for later in the week. And that's your comedy news for today. Follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, wherever you get your shows. Last week, a lot of downloads last week. The numbers are really starting to roll on this thing, so I appreciate you for listening. Tell a friend about it on the social medias, you know? See you tomorrow.